a Brian G here, the EV OG. Today, Rivian revealed their long awaited R2 midsize SUV. They also revealed smaller R3 and R3X compact SUVs. My take on it so far is meh. I, I'm really thrilled that we decided to go with the R1T instead of the R1S. And what I saw today only further validated that. I guess I was expecting a smaller R2T pickup, but it seems that this R1T is always going to be Rivian's flagship and the first electric pickup truck. Now, all of the Rivian R12 and R13 SUVs that were revealed today will have NAX charging ports on them. They've designed them with rear passenger side charge port locations. And I've already heard from Tesla owners uh, who are lamenting this is a really bad design idea. Because um, on the rear passenger side, that means that both R2 and R3 will also take two supercharger spots when charging. Now, there are tons of videos on this platform on today's R2 and R3 launch. This isn't one of those videos. Today, I'm going to show you guys what it's like to charge a Rivian at Tesla superchargers. So let's get into it. So one week ago today, we had a, what I consider to be a seminal moment in our transition to EVs with Tesla opening up superchargers to non-Teslas and with Ford, rightly so, being the first OEM to gain access. Now, over the course of the next month or so, Rivian, GM, Volvo, and Polestar will also gain supercharger access. As a Rivian R1T owner, we should be receiving free adapters to access superchargers shortly, and I cannot wait. Tesla's supercharger site indicates 27,000 plus stalls for Tesla vehicles, 15,000 plus stalls for NACs, and 500 plus stalls for other EVs. Clicking on Find Us allows you to filter for those superchargers open to NAX. And it shows nationwide and Canadian coverage that's pretty robust. Now, if I put in my zip code, it gives me a sense of where the chargers are that I can leverage. And as you can see, it's a pretty robust network all the way up and down the East Coast and really across North America with the exception of, uh, of Mexico, all the way up nationwide and on the way up into Canadian coverage. So really robust network. Changing the filter to superchargers open to other EVs will show the Magic Dock sites, which are far fewer, uh, only 500 of those. But the closest one to us in Maryland is in Easton. And we took a mini road trip to go check this out. Okay, so we just arrived at this Tesla Magic Dock supercharger in Easton, Maryland with our Rivian R1T. And we've got to figure out how we can use this with a non-Tesla vehicle. So I'm going to go into my Tesla app, scroll over here to charge a non-Tesla. It's going to identify where we are in 
and Easton. And I'm gonna need to get out and identify which of which of the cabinets we're plugging into. So down at the bottom here, there it is, 2D is where we're going to plug in. So I'm gonna come back to my app here on my iPad, indicate charge here. And now, okay. So those are instructions it walks you through. So now what I've got to do is choose the post number 2D. Okay, and it says unlock adapter. Push the handle into the dock, then pull out to remove. After plugging in, it may take up to two minutes to start charging. All right, so let's try that. Push it in, and now there it is with the magic dock. Hit the button here to open our charge port. There we go. Opened up the charge port. You gotta open that up from the J1772. Right there, it's plugged in. green over there as well as our light bar so now let's come back inside and see what we got all right there it is it says we are charging and it's cranking up 200 and wow 354 these are miles per hour so here's the other thing that we have on the app from Tesla. It's indicating how many kilowatt hours uh, we're consuming, total cost. There's the charging rate. So Tesla is actually giving it to us here. Uh, we're charging at 149 kilowatt. Now this vehicle is capable of 220 or so kilowatts charging speed on a DC fast charger. Go into our Rivian app. What can I see here? Okay, there we go, 149. And the nice thing about the app on Rivian is it actually gives us the charge curve all the way through. Right, so you can see it started low, ramped up, and it's pretty stabilized right now at 149. Now we don't need to charge. I just came out here to check out this magic dock, but we're gonna let it run for a while. Top off a little bit, and um, yeah, our first magic dock charging session. Now, I do want to give you a feel for what things look like here. Now, the charge port on the Rivian, as you probably know, is driver's side front, right? So where we're parked right now in order to charge is not consuming another, uh, an additional spot where a Tesla um, driver wouldn't be able to charge. Right, so typically a Tesla charging on this with the charge port in the back driver's side would be parked over here, right? So right now this space is going to be vacant, but the next Tesla driver can actually come right in here in order to use 2C, right? So in being able to park where we are, um, it doesn't impact any other Tesla driver's ability to um, plug in and, and to charge. If we were to use this one, um, 
we would be consuming essentially two parking spots, right? Because I couldn't park over here in order to charge our Rivian. I'd have to park here, which is typically the parking space for the 1B cabinet. So those are some of the nuances that um, we'll have to navigate with uh, non-Tesla vehicles charging on these uh, Tesla supercharger. But great to have this here in Easton. We typically will be towing our camper with our Rivian over to uh, the eastern shore of Maryland and, and Delaware. And uh, it's just not a ton of um, DC fast charging options out here. But we now have a Tesla Magic Dock. Hopefully we'll get a Rivian Adventure Network site out here. And that would really be the best of both worlds. Uh, still cranking at 378 miles per hour. We've already added 21 miles. And there we go. Charge curve, pretty consistent. It's actually climbing up a little bit here to 152 kilowatts. There's the update, 15 kilowatt hours of energy consumed at a cost of $7.80. I really wish that they would put this charge curve information into the center screen display. Um, there's some more details beyond the charging curve within the Rivian app. So it would take another 15 minutes for us to get to the uh, 80% uh, charge limit that we've got set. Shows energy delivered, miles per hour. Very much in alignment. All right, there we go. Um, at 2 p.m., we got the notice that uh, charging was stopped because we hit our 80% threshold. Uh, so I went ahead and unplugged. Let's see what we've got here for session summary. 24 minutes, we added 46.1 kilowatt hours. The vast majority of that went to the battery pack. A little bit went to the cabin and battery temps. And a little bit more went to accessories. So that's the session summary. We were here for 30 minutes. All right, let's uh, go into our Rivian app. Where are we here? Go into charging. And within charging, we're gonna go down here to history. And we're gonna look at Saturday, October 21st. So there are the details. 102 miles added in 30 minutes. 46 kilowatt hours added. And that aligns with what we see here in the center touchscreen in terms of the session summary. It charged us $23.92. So it held 20 bucks when we plugged in. Uh, 23.92 is, is what we ended up paying to get back to an 80% state of charge. That works out to be 52 cents per kilowatt hour. So this is not something that um, we're going to do unless we absolutely need it. Um, out here near the Delmarva Peninsula, there's just not a ton of um, non-Tesla charging. So if we're towing our camper out here, that is going to come in really handy for us, right? So very much uh, appreciate having this here. That's it for our, tes our Tesla Magic Dock charging experience.
Now, while that was a Magic Dock site, the next site we'll have access to in a few weeks will have essentially the same layout. So as great as I believe this is for our EV transition, I see this being a little messy until we get longer charging cables or better charge port locations on non-Tesla EVs. Either way, I'm here for it. And I can't wait for our next road trip using the supercharger network. So thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I could really use your support to get to my goal of 1,000 subscribers by April 15th. So thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one.